Hello and welcome to our new training video. Do you still struggle with the big topic of file handling? I will show you how easy it is done and what you have to be careful about. Just keep watching. We would appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. At the beginning, it is important to know that file handling functions should always be done in the background task. At first, I want to explain the difference between synchronous and asynchronous file handling to you. Let's start with the synchronous one. On one side we have the file storing in the background task and on the other side we got the visualization in the background task. So, we have visualization processing and then we switch over to the file storing. It starts with calling for a write access, then the time consuming file operations are done and it ends when the write access is completed. After this, we switch back to visualization. While we are doing the time consuming file operations, there is no visualization processing. This means that the visualization freezes and is not responding to user inputs. The better idea is to do it in an asynchronous way. On one side we have the file storing object in the background task and on the other side we got the visualization in the background task. We start with file processing in the background task, then it switches to visualization processing. After a little bit of visualization is processed, we start in an extra asynchronous task shown in the blue line, the time consuming file operation. In the meantime, the system can switch from visualization to file processing without stopping the visualization or the file processing task. Asynchronous functions are therefore better for the system. To explain the file handling to you, you need to know that you need a file handle. The steps are as follows. From the file handling object, you call the asynchronous file processing. This opens a file with the reference of a file handle. Next step is to reference to file handle and then do the file handling functions in the file. After this, you have to check for asynchronous task status. If the asynchronous task state is checked, you can close the file with the reference of the file handle and then the asynchronous task is finished. When it comes to file handling, you need to know a few basic functions to set the file handling up. The file handling functions are to be found in the class underscore file handling within the OS interface library. First one is to create the file on the SD card of the control. It is done with the method file create underscore a. Set the asynchronous parameter to 1. For drive, path name and extension you choose the path where you want to store the file on the control. As size, it is important to put the file size big enough that you do not have to extend the file every time you want to write in it. Next is the value you want the file to be filled with and at last you put the attribute. The attributes can be seen in the help file of the underscore filesus in the appendix. This method gives you an asynchronous ID back. This is needed later to know the status of the asynchronous task, if it is in progress or already finished. Next one is the file open. The function file open underscore a must be done asynchronous. For file name you choose the file that should be opened. And the last one is to choose an attribute, for example to open it for read and write or just in read-only mode. This method gives you an asynchronous ID back. This is needed later to know the status of the asynchronous task, if it is still in progress or already finished. To write into a file, you use the file write underscore av1 method. It is set to asynchronous operation. Next parameter you need is the file handle. The file handle is the reference between the file and the system. With this file handle, the system always knows which file I want to write into. Then we need the buffer with the data that should be written and at last the length of the buffer. This method gives you an asynchronous ID back. This is needed later to know the status of the asynchronous task, if it is still in progress or already finished. Next operation is to close a file. This should be done asynchronous and you must put the file handle inside so that the system knows which file should be closed. As you can remember from file write, the file handle is the reference between system and file. If you want to read a file, you use the file read underscore av1 function. Set it up as an asynchronous function. 
Next parameter is the file handle that the system knows which file it should read. Set up a buffer where you want to write the read data into. And at last, the buffer length must be given. As for the asynchronous task, we need to know the status of it before we can switch to the next asynchronous function. Therefore, we got the function get async state. You must put the async ID in it that it knows which function should be checked. And we also get the file handle back from the system. If you have used the file write underscore av1 function, you also need the get async state function. But the parameter erg is now not the file handle, but it is the length of the file. So make sure that you do not overwrite the file handle, otherwise you cannot close the file. After getting the async state, you must check for it. If the async state is zero, then the asynchronous task is finished. If you deleted the file handle or we have an invalid ID, you must set up an error step. But it could also be not started or still in progress. As last part, I just show you an example of how a file handling step should be set up in asynchronous way. So first you call the method in asynchronous mode and in next step you check if the asynchronous function is finished or if it needs more time.